Everything Chris Everything Chris Everything Chris Everything 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 Chris Everything Chris Everything Chris Everything Everything Chris There we go. All right, all right. There we go. Finally got there. We got there. I don't know what it was. It just all of a sudden clicked down. So been now, man. It's all right, man. We still got there in the end, people. We're here, people. We've had um, loads of problems with internet around this way uh, um, today. Uh, been um, trying to get it sorted out, but I'm on my uh, data now, so it should be okay. What's your location? Colchester, Essex. Yes, Essex man in the building. How are you doing anyway, man? Good, good, thanks. Yeah. Well, good All now. Right. I've got this. How you been dealing with the quarantine? Um, okay, I went, um, been going back to my day job. Uh, started yesterday, a couple of half days yesterday and today. So it weren't too bad, but I had nine weeks off. Which yeah. actually, to be fair, helped with uh, a lot of the big dog stuff because um had a lot of time to connect with people and, you know, like um, uh, rebound and always balling. Obviously yourself, Gary yeah. Maitland, obviously you speaking to later on. Yeah. Um, um, and, a, and a few others, you know, and it's, it's been really good to, to talk to them guys. You know, Ashley Hamilton, obviously you had on your show uh, yeah. a couple of weeks ago, a week ago. Um, he's he's been really good and been speaking to him, all to do with yeah, like man. you know Instagram posts and things like that. It's been really he's been really useful. It's been really good. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, Ashley's been really great. I liked his um, I'm liking his uh, content that he's um, he's sharing. And no, it's helped yeah, me a lot. lot. I've learned, learned a lot really a lot. from from him and what he's been doing and what he's been putting up and just speaking to him. You know, it's been I think really it's good. good as well. Unless you see things, helps you to see things from a different perspective. So. It's just like um, they, with uh, doing your bio and with just messaging people and, you know, it helps you see things from a different perspective. Everyone can tell you what to do. It's all about how you send a message. I think how we send a message is, is yeah. helping us a lot, helping me a lot anyway. I yeah, he's helped me. Know. I mean, massively. He probably doesn't know, but he's, he's helped me out massively, you know, with some of the, uh, the content we're putting up. Uh, you know, getting others involved more than anything has been the main thing. You know, because I think people can be so fixated on their brand and their product and, and what they're doing yeah. that they miss out on, you know, what other people are trying to do. And actually, if you help other people, they're going to help you, you know, especially with advertising yeah. and things, you know, and, and get the name. From him. Yeah, I learned that from yeah. him as well. Like, um, just even this little thing. Yeah, like you said, sharing and commenting on people's pages and you said it does mm -hmm. a lot for yourself. It promotes yourself as well in ways you don't really realise. So you just think, yeah. you know, no, I'm not going to comment, but if you do, people can see it, you know. So it's good. Yeah. yeah it's good. You got good. rebound. Oh, yes, rebound. All right. So where, is it? so where is it you grew up then? Is it Colchester you grew up then? Essex. Yeah, grew up Essex, Colchester. I've been there my whole life, really. Moved away to Norwich for a year and worked in bars and clubs. And Oh, well, yeah, I've been there before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a good night out. I, I go back regularly to visit mates and that, but um, that's really where I've learned, like, the promotion side of things and, you know, the music and the and the, the promotion and the DJ and things like that, all from sort of working out in Norwich and big crowds and big city. yeah. yeah. No, I worked in a nightclub in Leeds. So yeah, that that was a that's yeah. a anyone knows, any might know she's here. Leeds is one of those nightlifes, man. It's uh it's a messy it can be a messy one. Yeah. So before ten o'clock you got like a lot of people drunk before they can get in the club. So yeah, I know, yeah. I know about the nightclubs life. So that's yeah. one thing. Well that, that's that's really where I started. Bars and clubs was um something that I did for about fifteen plus years working as manager and, and promotions manager in different bars and clubs. And that's where, like, Big Dog come from, really, like, the music side, the music background, the entertainment and the promotion. That's really where it all come from. No worries. That's dope. That's dope. 
That's good, man. And then when did you when did you kind of get attached to basketball? When did you fall in love with the game sport? <laughs> well, actually, my mum's a netballer and has been for yeah uh, a long, long time and coaching netball. And I started going to netball games and started shooting, obviously, in the, the netball rings. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, when I went to senior school, I started playing basketball and realised I was half decent at basketball because of my, my netball skills. <laughs> but, yeah, um, it helps. Yeah, so the two really come together other than, you know, I just practised hard on my dribbling and, and went from there. Okay, okay. And then what was your first basketball experience? Do you remember? Um, Talk us through that one. Yeah, actually, I um, I played for the school. And this is the first, um, my first basketball memory. I was playing for the school and I, f I tried to throw a one-handed sort of hook pass across court. And yeah. it caught one of my own guys in the face. I put him out for the rest of the game. That's my memory, but <laughs> but uh, that's my first memory. My best memory, yeah. Uh, our best earliest memory is probably playing for Highwood Oaks, uh, a local league team who were full of ex uh, national league, ex national players. Yeah. Um, my first coach was Graham Brown, a school teacher, and he um, really sort of put me in uh, I was 15 put me in the men's team and just let me sort of you know run with it really and that's really where that's my sort of first memory of proper mm -hmm. you know uh, team men's basketball was at the age of about 15 I mean the guys now they've got teams under 16s under 18s teams they can play and back then we didn't we were either too young or you know using a men's team and that was it really that was it men's team yeah, yeah yeah and getting beaten up by them <laughs> in bullies, isn't it? Yeah, so that, yeah. So is that what your playing career was mainly um, locally then? So mainly local league. I've had a few games under twenty, under twenties, under twenty ones national league for Colchester Alliance. I think it only lasted about a season. Um, and then really, my passion has just been playing local league, but organising the local league setup to give players or guys that are not. Uh, the elite standard a chance to be able to play you know okay. so so even up to now I have a Sunday morning session um, that caters for everybody and anybody that wants to come and play basketball uh, uh, just a scrimmage session that everybody can just come along and right. run up and down you know you don't have to be elite to, to join in it's yeah. just a case if you love the game you can come and play I'm a, that's good, man. And how's that been like, just getting anyone and everyone to play, man? How's it's everyone, been good. How's, yeah, how's it? I mean, it really started taking off just before the lockdown. And um, I'm hoping when it's, when it's back up again, it'll, you know, when we're reopened, that we can go back up there and play again. And I've got a lot of things, you know, yeah, big up the Sunday screens. <laughs> uh, we, um, you know, I've got loads of things in the pipeline with um, like basketball camps for juniors, you know, shooting sessions all all year round for anybody that wants to come and improve on their shooting. With some really good coaches got coming in with uh, Ross Norfolk. Um, he's the uh, Essex Rebels Division One coach. He's going to come and do a few shooting yeah. sessions and coaching sessions. And Tom Sadler, who's the uh, WBBL Essex Rebels coach head coach, he's going to come in and, and do bits and pieces for me. Um, and obviously, I'll, I'll hopefully do a few myself, but. I think it's good to get people with that, that experience in to help out like the youngsters when they do the camps and anybody that wants to improve basketball. Yeah. With the likes of like Ginge, um, Ross Norfolk, he obviously worked with Great Britain um, men's team as well. So the experience is there. Uh, obviously, Tommy uh, played abroad, um, played in France, went to America to high school. So, okay, yeah. You know, the experience is there with those coaches and, and, and the kids, you know, are lucky because uh, Tommy runs the academy in Essex as well, um, the Culture Academy, uh, the, the Rebels Academy. And he, um, he he's done really well with them kids, you know, um, and done a good job. They're, they're the right. sort of people I'm looking to give you. So talk us through when you started getting into hosting and uh, announcing games. Uh, I leading up to what, what made you want to go that route? Well, 
it was I was playing anyway, and then I come across a local um, national league team. I think they were under 18s, under 16s at the time, called Colchester Alliance. Yeah. Um, it was probably one of the first junior national league setups in Colchester. There was uh, a successful men's team throughout the 70s and 80s, um, but the one of the first national league junior setups was. Uh, Cultural Alliance run by Mark Lloyd, um, who also is involved with the Great Britain uh, set up and some of the teams uh, as team manager. And he um, he run it and they were just playing games. And I turned up and saw they had, you know, no music or no real hype about it. You know, so I volunteered and said that, you know, I'd, I'll come and do some music. Um, yeah. And it was just literally uh, an amp with a couple of old speakers <laughs> and the wires hooked up, and just yeah, no one can touch it because they were going to get electrocuted from it, you know. <laughs> it's a, but you know, and we had crowds. We had big, big crowds coming down to a sports centre, um, you know, in in Colchester. Big crowds, you know, and, and we even took big crowds away with us. But so yeah, that's where it all started, really. And um, I was still working in the bars and clubs as I got older, and the the music carried on um then i went th then i s didn't do so much of the the basketball games i was doing other events and stuff with the the bars and clubs and then about three years ago i spoke to mike lloyd again who was running the um essex yeah. union team and i went and did started up there just off my phone just did bits yeah. and pieces off my phone and a, and a speaker and then that really just every year since then uh, a year later, yeah. Big Dog got formed. I got a name and got the business up and running. And from then, it went on to, obviously, the WBBL Essex Rebels team that I do. Um, the men's, which is now men's division one, men's division three, Essex Rebels, uh, Essex, uh, sorry, Ipswich um, division two men's and uh, Ipswich women's division one. So I do all of them. I did all them this year. Uh, alongside the, I did the WBBL Trophy weekend. Yeah, I yeah. did the England. Uh, in what was the Newcastle versus Kestrel? Is it well Solent yeah. and um, also the Riders versus uh, Durham? There was, there was, there were every team played. It was over the whole weekend. So I did, I think I did okay. uh, eight or nine games over the whole weekend. All right, um, and. And what I do is I do the music and the the host and the commentary as well, so it was it was it was quite a difficult weekend, but we we got through it. Got um, great, yeah, yeah, all good. But good. yeah, so that led me actually on to getting the national cup finals and academy finals through basketball England. They were there that day, and then they they asked me to go and do their their cup finals and um, academy finals, which was oh, whoops. <laughs> getting bored now things all falling over man <laughs> stuff all falling over yeah go on <laughs> yeah so the, the from the trophy weekend you know and, and showing I've got, I've got the um, national cup final like I said and the, the academy finals and I was talking to because I worked with Tahir uh, Hajat in the um, in the cup finals and that and he was um, going off doing like he does he works for doing bits for Sky Sports he's the the host and that at uh, Leicester Football Club. Um, he does all of them bits and pieces, and he's, he gets a lot of obviously um, hosting work with uh, basketball. And was doing the uh, up in Sheffield the uh, Great Britain wheelchair tournament or games, uh, oh. and I, know I, got, I got invited to do that as well. Oh, that's dope! So you've been around a lot of places then, as well as yeah. Leicester. Unfortunately, I didn't get to do the Sheffield one with the wheelchair team because of um, Corona, but that would have been great. That would have been something else I would have loved to go and do. Corona did kind of put a span of work on everyone's um, kind of plans, really. My yeah. plan this year was to go to as many teams as possible and just try and talk and network and tell them what we're planning to do. But yeah, I was on the That was unfortunate. So I was going to prepare myself for next season. But you know, are you still going to come and do a? If the season gets up and running this year, you're going to come and do a few interviews at. The games I'm doing. Oh, you need it. Oh, I'll come down there, man. We've talked about that, man. You know, when so I get, you know what I mean, more the more the better, isn't it? More content. Yeah. The better. That's oh, it. definitely, definitely. It's all, about, it's all about uplifting the sport, especially in women's sport. 
Um, we're, oh, so we're yeah. women's basketball, and I was having this conversation with someone else today about it. Just, um, I feel like they need a lot more attention as well as English basketball as a whole, and it's hard for them in this country mm -hmm. that they're not. It's hard enough that women are not get enough attention, and on top of it, in a country where basketball's not respected as much, it's even harder for them. So. Mm -hmm. It's definitely, definitely something I would definitely love to push women's basketball. I think at the end of the day, with women's basketball, we just got to appreciate women for who they are. When they're, they're not Russell Westbrook's, they're not Russell yeah. Westbrook's, they're not um, James Harden's, they're not the LeBron James's. They, they're women. They're structured different. So we have to accept the fact that these women can play basketball. They know the sport. They play it different. Mm -hmm. from day, so we appreciate them for that. Yeah, I've been, I've been obviously to a few games. Um, at uh, Essex Uni for the for the Rebels and seen some really really good games and and it's you know we put I mean we won the um, Game Day Entertainment Award for uh, National League this year and we do the same thing for the the WBBL yeah, yeah. Uh, games and it's just it's, it's really really good day out for everybody to come along you know and and watch just the, obviously the game the halftime entertainment you know the music and everything that's going on in in one day it's not just the basketball game you know they make a real big show of it up in up in Essex you know everything 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 Chris everything Chris everything Chris everything everything Chris uh.